So, Anora is the story of Annie, a young exotic dancer uh, in Brooklyn who meets and impulsively marries the son of a Russian oligarch named Ivan, who's actually a pretty charming kid uh, for the most part for being a spoiled brat. Uh, they are hyper modern, right? They party like nobody believes and they get liquid IVs the next day and they run around the boardwalk and have a great time with each other. And uh, on a fateful weekend in Las Vegas, Ivan comes up with the idea that, hey, if we, uh, you know, maybe go hitch, uh, this can turn into a bit of a green card situation and I could stay here in America. And uh, Annie takes him up on it. I think that's a great idea because she falls for this kid. She's crazy about him. But it's only after their hits that she discovers that uh, Ivan's upbringing comes comes with a few caveats she didn't expect. And when a couple of rough men show up to figure out what this deal is between what they call a fraud marriage, her and Ivan, Vanya, as she calls him, uh, it's up to Annie or Honora to figure out how to get through and keep her fairy tale alive. Uh, it is a fascinating picture that won the Palme d'Or at Cannes last year. Uh, Sean Baker has made a few features that I haven't seen enough of, frankly. I know we covered Florida Project on this show. I think I've maybe seen a couple others uh, that we haven't covered here. So I was really looking forward to this and and not knowing a lot about it, just kind of going in fresh. We managed to catch uh, one of a few screenings in our town here. So we actually saw it in a theater, which rocked. Uh, but first, I got to know, Andy, what did you think of Nora? So I've heard a lot of buzz about this. Again, Palme d'Or w- winner at, at Cannes. I've heard a lot about the, per- the main performance by Mikey Madison, um, who's an uh, up-and-coming star. And I wasn't sure d- what to think, but I ended up really liking it, and it kind of stuck with me for, for days uh, after. I, I was a little unsure of where it was going, but it, I think it wraps up in, in a really smart place. It is really funny. There's a lot. I mean, my audience was cracking up uh, throughout the, the whole movie. Uh, great, and there are great performances, not just from Mahi Madison, but everyone who's in the movie, because the writing is really strong. Even the side characters are written really three dimensionally, um, and it's a bit of a tragic tale, but also strangely hopeful at, at the same time. Really, ended up really enjoying it. Yeah, uh, Anora's a lot of fun and looks great on screen. Uh, Sean Baker knows how to spend a budget, and this movie looks lush, right? These giant mansions, these like expensive clubs, uh, even the CD clubs that look okay at night with the lights on. Like all of this comes alive in Anora, and it's a cool experience to watch in a theater if you have the means. You should. I'm sure it'll be available on streaming soon. You can watch it on the big screen, but. Great presentation. I, I I want to start off with that. Additionally, like you said, incredible performances. Uh, I saw this people saying this was like a career, like like kindling for Mikey Madison. Like she's, her, her career is going to take off after this. After watching the film, they're probably right. Put this girl in some movies. She's she's got the chops. Additionally, uh, there's one other guy in this movie who you, I don't think is in the trailer ever once. Uh, Yura Borisov, uh, who's a Russian actor, is incredible as Igor. Igor in this movie, uh, he's stunning. Uh, and and one more mention, uh, Mark A. I. Edelstein, uh, Edelstein uh, as as Ivan is a ton of fun. This like young kid who's comes from a bunch of money and is in America and doesn't really have a lot of empathy for uh, p- the people around him because he's just there to have a good time, man. And like when he takes Nora's arm and brings her along for the ride, like that film immediately hits the gas. You get going somewhere which turns into like a bit of a breakless, bla- breakless freewheel when the film takes a turn in act two and these guys show up and want to know what, what the hell the deal is with these two and what do you mean you married an, an erotic dancer? And uh, it makes for, makes, for, makes for a fun time. Yeah. Um, I think, geez, where, where to start? So I'll start with uh, performances. So uh, Mikey Madison does the heavy lifting in this movie. She's like kind of this loud, very confident um girl who who you know she works at uh, a high-end strip club and gets it gets mixed it up with uh vanya and but what's interesting is that she is uh like she's she's confident like she's loud but she also she has to learn how to do like look like a convincing exotic dancer so there's a whole lot of like it's a very physical performance and kind of in in the beginning and first half and then it's a very kind of emotional thing throughout the rest of it where she's trying to hang on to this thing that seems too good to be true because uh vanya is 
grotesquely wealthy uh you know he wants her to be his girlfriend for a week and she says okay and they agree to fifteen thousand, and he's like no problem for you, to, for you to like pretend to be my girlfriend for for a week and you know he pay, pays for everything they they party they private jets private hotels lo lots of booze and uh, illicit substances uh it just seems like too good to be true and the thing is her character is all business like from the from the beginning she's uh, like you want her to her time you want access to her it's going to cost you and so that's her how her character is throughout the whole movie and and she's you know found this gold this golden goose and she's trying desperately to to hang on to it and uh meanwhile uh vanya again played by uh, mark i i'll have to work on his last name because yeah yeah it's, it's long it's long and i could probably read it better in russian mark <laughs> mark e um he does a great job as being this kind of hapless playboy he doesn't care about anything just wants to play video games all day he has to speak both in russian and in english very convincingly um and he kind of he, but he's also deep down doesn't really care about anyone than himself and so just really strong performances and also some surprising performances from our like goons who show up to be like okay we're getting this thing in old and you need to come with us like whether you like it or or, or not some really fascinating performances yeah and like some really incredible tones in Anora. like it fundamentally starts as like uh an ambitious idyllic romance right like these two meet and at first it's kind of like a fun dating thing i'm paying you but we're all so cool and then they really start to fall for each other and you're like you get these wonderful scenes of them like having fun hanging out with friends they go to a candy shop on the on the boardwalk and they're like getting whatever they want and, like getting getting stoned on the weekday and and going out to vegas and that's all like fine and fun and, you know, loving, heart, heartfelt and, and sincere, I think. And then in act two, when it turns into, I don't want to say too much about it, but it fundamentally turns into a bit of a comedy, uh, which I didn't expect. And it leads to a lot of emotional connection with the audience. Like, like you had said in your, your theater, same with mine. Everyone's laughing. Everyone was having a good time in there. Like a lot of genuine connection. And then almost like a Wes Anderson movie, you get a bit of an emotional upswing at the end that you didn't expect. Comes out of nowhere, right? Knocks you right back into your seat. And that is surprisingly powerful for fundamentally how simple this script is. Like Anora is not a complicated story. You could compare it to a Disney story, Cinderella. Um, but I think what you get out of it is really magical. Uh, it's something that's going to stick with a lot of people, uh, mostly because I think the subject matter is so sincere. Mikey Madison really is incredible in this. Like not only in her ability to physically perform the role, which is nuts. Like Margaret, we were talking about like Margaret Qualley in substance level of of, of nudity yeah. on display here. It's crazy. Um, but also like tonally, uh, Honora is a complicated person. She's very complicated, but she has to present as simple to her clients and the world around her. And of course, I so when she really starts to kind of go for him, she has to convince you, the audience member, that her character feels what she's feeling at the time when maybe she's trying to convince somebody else that she's not. It's complicated and it's complex. And like it really draws you in, man. Like you really lean forward through the second half of Honora, um, which makes for a really special ending uh, that I, I likely unforgettable. Like it, it made for a theater experience that was like really special. I'm really glad I saw it in a room full of people. Yeah, an incredible uh, denouement. Uh, but also, I had heard this compared to Uncut Gems, and it it does have that factor in the in the stress level, particularly during the middle of the movie when these gangsters uh, show up to um, kind of because they're trying to control everyone. Their uh, Va uh, Vanya kind of uh, disappears, and they they have to look for him. Uh, but it's a real fascinating kind of middle of the the movie where. Um, they end up kind of going on a little bit of a goose chase trying to to find him and it, it's an incredible exploration on uh, the dynamics of power because these guys do not care about <laughs> basically r rule of law uh, like they, they work for someone who's so rich they're they're just not worried about everyday people and i think that's part of what the, what the film is analyzing uh reminded me of i've been reading through the first book of game of thrones game of thrones and that book is very much about the dynamics of power what is power and who has it and this movie kind of explores that as well because anora 
has power kind of at the beginning of the film and then it's Vanya and then it's Vanya's parents and we see kind of how this shifts largely because of who has the the most uh, monies but it's just a fascinating look at a number of kind of things like that yeah I know I'd mentioned presentation at the top but I do just want to reiterate before I wrap it up uh the, this movie looks fantastic like looks great. It's it's surprising how good of a movie it looks. I know they didn't have that big of a budget additionally. Like banger soundtrack, Spotify playlist rocks, like ton of modern music that, that young folks would be listening to, right? Like stuff that I don't have in a playlist, but I might lift a couple uh, for, you know, the gym or whatever. Uh, like Anora looks and sounds like a great time. And that's what it's supposed to be. It wants to invite you into this party. Come get into the fun that like these people are having and experiencing. Like it, it, it draws you in, just keeps winding you back. And then before you know it, like hits you with some emotion that you didn't expect. It's powerful. It's a good time. Like it's great work from Sean Baker, like another banger. I had completely forgotten that he did Florida Project until... We had been talking about it after I saw after we both saw Nora and and you mentioned it. I was like, oh God, you're right. And it's got that same like trademark, uh, human level handheld camera style. Like it just feels so grounded. It feels like such a real place. Like the world that Nora lives in is the same one we all live in. You know, like it's, and that makes it sincere and that makes it special. And I think that's that's what this movie does so well. Yeah. Also, it's filmed in glorious 35 mil- millimeter. It's got that that brilliant grain really kind of help, helps th- helps with the setting, you know, because it's in New York um, where most of it t- takes place. And so it's, it's got that kind of little older school uh, feeling more. I don't know it's 35 mil. Yeah. Oh, it looks great. Any other thoughts or recommendations, Andy? I think I'm ready. Andy, would you recommend Anora? Yeah, absolutely would. Uh, had a great time. It's it's an incredible story from beginning to end. A lot of fun in the middle where it's, it kind of becomes a bit of a raucous comedy. Fantastic performances from our leads. Mikey Madison is a star. There's talk that, that she's going to get an Oscar nomination uh, from this. Uh, Sean Baker doing great work uh, again. Highly recommend. Yeah, uh, same. Anora rocks. It is a ton of fun. I... I don't know if it's going to be anybody's favorite film of the year um, because it's been a really incredible year with the movies, but like easily top 10 material, easily top 10 material, maybe top five, perhaps top three. I don't know. We'll have to see when we get to top tens at the end of the year, but I would recommend you go see Anora. I think Anora is a lot of fun. If you can catch it in a theater, I know it's a limited, limited window for viewing it. You may not be able to catch it, but like, if I don't know if you're free on a Saturday and you got nothing to do, I would recommend going and checking out Anora. And then when it comes to streaming services, absolutely recommend totally watch it at home i will probably be rewatching again with that we got to move into some trailers uh three this week to talk about some upcoming stuff that we missed since i've been away andy what do we call this segment it's time for the trailer park 